In this video, I want to show you how the EPRO memory works in an Atiny85 microcontroller. So I've written a function that can write to the EEPROM, which I have here. So the first parameter of the function is an unsigned short, which will be the address where we want to write the data, which is the second parameter. So this is how you use the function. You provide it with uh, any number between 0 and 511 for the address in the first parameter and the second parameter you provide it with a byte that you want to write to that address. So I've written 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 to 6 different addresses. So the way the function works is uh, I've actually taken it from the data sheet plus a modification that will allow me to write to the uh, to all the bytes that are available. So first thing you gotta do is you gotta check that the EEPE bit is equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, you need to wait because that means that we are still doing some uh, writing to the EEPROM. So you can do a while loop and just wait until this is equal to zero so that you can move on to modifying the EEPROM. Next thing you gotta do is you gotta set your programming mode. So you go to your data sheet, you're gonna see that uh, we have several programming modes that we can choose from. So these are the uh, different programming modes that you can have erase and write, erase only, write only. So I've chosen the erase and write operation. Next, I'm checking the address range. If it's any number between, I mean, less than 512, then I just pass it to the address byte, to, which is the EEPROM address register. And then uh, if it's any number greater than that, then I just assign it the number 511, which is the maximum value that you can have for your address. Uh, then you just pass the data to the uh, EEPROM data register. Lastly, you need to enable writing by setting the EEMPE bit to 1. That doesn't start writing, it just means that uh, we are enabling writing. To actually start writing, we assign the value of 1 to the EEPE bit. So this is how you do that and this actually starts the writing operation. So now let's go ahead and uh, extract the EEPROM from the Atiny85. So you would have to go to Tools, Device Programming, Apply, Memories, then just press the read button and save it to any file on your computer and then open that file in notepad or any other similar program and where we are, let me go ahead and open my EEPROM file that I extracted after I run this program so this is my EEPROM file Notice that uh, I have the address 0A here. So the way this uh, this EEPROM file works or the way you you can read it is as follows. You have, uh, if you count the number of bytes, right here you have 16. If you count the number of total rows, you have 32. So that's 32 rows times 16 bytes. That gives you 512 bytes, which is the amount of memory specified in your in the data sheet for the Atiny85. And so this is your this is my data for the first row. And the way you start counting the bytes is that's one. I mean that's the zero address. 1, 2, all the way to 16, I mean 15, all the way to 15, so from 0 all the way to 15, 
and then I have an 11 here that's the uh, if you look at my code that's a number 11 in hexadecimal and that should be a byte 10 so that's one two I mean zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten similarly I have the uh, number 11 in hexadecimal at 61 and number 22 in hexadecimal at 6b which is this 11 here and this 22 and what about these numbers here well if you look at uh, the address that I assigned in my code notice that it's, it has a 6 here that corresponds to this 6 before the 1 and this 6 before the b and then the 1 and the b correspond to to the bytes in the row so that's 0 1 so that's this one here and then if you keep counting this should give you 11 which is b in hexadecimal so that is how you read those numbers I, I think of it like a coordinate system so this number here it's my first I guess my first four bits from uh, left to right in the address that I provide and then the second number here would be provided by the uh, count in my row what about the uh, last byte in the row if we pull out a calculator let me make it uh, hexadecimal so I have 7c 22 and 11 so if you add those three numbers 7c plus 22 plus 11 gives me af I also have to add the uh, number of modified bytes in that row which are 11 and 22 those are the only oh uh, actually I also modified uh, 6f which is in the same row and that's ee so i also have to add uh, ee and that's here as you can see ee so i also have to add ee to that number so now i have uh, like i said i modified three bytes in that row so if i add three i get a zero at the end i get one a zero but only look at the uh, last byte which is a0 so if you notice here the last row we were the way it counts is 30 40 50 60 90 and then we should have a0 here and then b0 so the number that uh, should have been here if you hadn't modified any of the, of the addresses would have been a0 which is what I have in my sum and uh, if you have any uh, any number that is above uh, FF for your address then you look at these two numbers so for example I have uh, 3B here which corresponds to my address 134 hexadecimal so that's 13 and then the 4 would be when I start counting from here 0 1 2 3 4 So that's how you can uh, read a memory map in your app Tiny85 for the EEPROM. If you want to write a function that reads, simply look for it in the uh, data sheet. If you do a control find for EEPROM underscore read, you will find that function. So that is the function that you can use for reading from the EEPROM and if you want to know this is, so this is the uh, write function that I modified and the steps are actually pretty good in the data sheet for what you need to do for reading and writing so you follow the steps for the uh, programming modes that's the atomic split uh, write erase and write so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe